Dr. Kudra, many thanks for, for, uh, for this interview at this extremely critical time. Um, I'll divide my questions roughly into four sections. One, one about um, uh, Fatah and, and, and yourself in the West Bank, the other about uh, Hamas, and, and thirdly uh, about what you think is going on with the Arab states and, and with Israel and what your message is to, to the world in general. But to, to, just to start with, can you describe in your own words uh, what you think has been happening over the last nine days, um, uh, not just in the West Bank and in Gaza, but in 48 and also in Jerusalem? Well, yes, of course. Um, let's start that the whole thing started with uh, Israeli invasion of uh, Al-Aqsa Mosque during the last 10 most religious important days uh, for Palestinian people and specifically for, uh, for Muslims in addition to Israeli actions related to evicting many Palestinians from their homes second time or maybe third time uh, in Sheikh Jarrah, Jerusalem. So Israel have been doing the usual, the usual things against Jerusalemites uh, in, in Jerusalem. And only after that, uh, the the exchange between Hamas and, and Israel started. Uh, Hamas sent uh, its rockets and Israel responded with outrageous, uh, disproportionate, huge amount of uh, fire against the Palestinian people generally in Gaza, uh, causing a huge number of deaths and injuries and uh, untold destruction and, and suffering of the population there. Uh, after that, uh, Palestinian people in the uh, 1948 uh, part started to, uh, to react. And we have seen uh, interracial or intercommunal clashes between Palestinians and, and Jews in many mixed cities. In addition, of course, to uh, the situation in the West Bank itself, where we uh, did have uh, concrete reactions by an important segment of the Palestinian people in the West Bank. So generally, it is not acceptable for uh, the usual narration that Hamas started all this, the proof that it started to fire rockets against Israel. And uh, it's not acceptable also to speak of uh, Palestinian attacks against Israelis. Uh, in, in the heart of it, it's the uh, long-lasted uh, Israeli policies, all kinds of uh, negative, outrageous policies against the Palestinian people everywhere that led to the current situation and the common unified reaction by all parts of the Palestinian people everywhere. And uh, that include, by the way, people in the diaspora, outside Palestine, outside the region. And we uh, see every day uh, demonstrations and, and reactions and solidarity actions by uh, Palestinian communities in addition to uh, their friends, our friends from uh, all over the world. There is uh, there's talk at the moment of, of, of a ceasefire being arranged tonight. Even if that comes about, well, according to your analysis, this is not going to just disappear because it's not going to disappear in, in, in 48. It's not going to disappear in Jerusalem. The next time an Israeli court evicts uh, a family from Sheikh Jarrah, uh, it, it's going to blow up again. That's correct, isn't it? It's not just going to disappear with a ceasefire. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, furthermore, I think uh, what has been happening proves uh, beyond, uh, beyond doubt uh, the futility of the overall Israeli policies towards the Palestinian people. That policy that uh, considers uh, all mandated Palestine as Jewish or as Israelis, that negates the national existence and the national rights of the Palestinian people, that uh, uh, deny the Palestinian people their basic right in, rights, including, for instance, the right to self-determination, that maintains a, a unhuman siege against, against Gaza, 
etc., uh, etc., et systematic oppression, of course, uh, all, all kind of, of, of horrible things, the kind of which no other state can, can, can escape with it without accountability, except in the case of Israel, thanks to the automatic protection of the US administration's successive, I would say, US administrations, in spite of some differences between one and another. So uh, this overall policy has proven, as I said, uh, as futile, as, as ineffective, as, as failing policy. And definitely uh, the mere fact of reaching kind of ceasefire now in Gaza is not going to do the trick. It's not going to solve all, all the problems and uh, most probably we'll see more of the same, more of, of the flare up situations and more of confrontations and maybe even uh, uh, one more confrontation in Gaza or between Gaza and Israel itself. What should happen with the Palestinian leadership? Should it combine now? What should be the response? Are you still, for instance, uh, wanting to contest? The, are the elections still on? Are you still actively pushing for, for, for the elections to be held? What, tell, tell me your, 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 your calculation now. Now, nobody knows uh, what happened to the elections, to tell you the truth. And actually, uh, there was uh, election planned, organized, and all of a sudden, somehow, someone uh, canceled the elections, or to be specific, postponed the elections, uh, Senadias, without fixing any new date, which practically means uh, canceling the elections. And that in itself gives you an example of. Uh, how bad the situation is, how bad the internal Palestinian situation is, and proves once more the need for a broad and, and, uh, and deep change in the uh, Palestinian situation. Uh, we can't go on uh, like that. We, we need uh, drastic changes, one that uh, uh, change the internal politics and uh, internal policies and change also the Palestinian policy vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Is, is, in your view, Mahmoud Abbas still fit to be president? Well, I wouldn't like to personalize things, but I, I think the current situation is untenable. Uh, we, need, uh, we need a change, and change, in my mind, means uh, changing uh, persons, personalities, changing policies, as well as changing positions. Uh, as I said, uh, the, the continuation of what we have now will lead to only uh, more problems and more uh, catastrophes for, for the Palestinian people. And that's one of the reasons why we need to affect to affect change. Before you got expelled from Fatah, you described yourself as Fatah to the bone. You were a very significant member of it. You were a member of the Central Committee. What does Fatah stand for now, do you think? Now, let me uh, clarify one thing that uh, I, I do not recognize any legitimacy of the action taken by the Central Committee or to be more specific by the influential party in the uh, Central Committee. Uh, I do belong to Fatah and I am Fatah and I think that uh, what we have seen is not the end of the story. Uh, the story is still uh, long uh, and, and we will see different chapters. I have, I have no doubt in my mind. And this is not a personal, uh, personal bag that anyone can carry here and there. So uh, that's, let, let's, put, uh, let's put this uh, aside and, and to answer your question, what Fatah stands for. You know, Fatah is basically a, an important principles and, and very important ideas and uh, history and uh, column of martyrs and huge struggling records against Israel and all the enemies of the Palestinian people. So it's larger big things, a rather big thing. And uh, definitely what we see now is not, at least from my point, my personal point of view, is not the fact that I know. And when we establish, by the way, the National Democratic Assembly, uh, to my mind, when we say national and democratic, this is fact that I know. And the program we came up with, the program of action, I think uh, befits Fatah exactly the way I understand it and the way that it should be. And it is going to be one way or another, 
hopefully uh, if, if, if change or when change takes place in the Palestinian arena generally, the change within Fatah will be a part of it. There is no doubt in my mind. Um, uh, Abu uh, Rudena, who is the presidential spokesman, said very recently, he said this in the past, but I think he said it yesterday or today, that he defended security cooperation with uh, with Israel as a as a sovereign right of the Palestinian people for the defense of the Palestinian people. Do, do, do you agree with that? No, of course not. But uh, you know, the problem in my mind is not that there is security coordination between the Palestinian Authority and the Israeli authorities. What we have now is much worse than coordination. Unfortunately, parts of uh, our uh, structures security structures uh, is linked somehow to the Israeli security structures. So uh, it's hard to call this coordination. Uh, had we had uh, the coordination per the agreements reached, probably the situation would have been much, much different. In any case, it's not sovereign right. Uh, it's, it's something that some of us are pursuing uh, uh, contrary to the interests, the national interests of the Palestinian people. This is one of the things that need that needs to be changed. Or there's no doubt about that. When we negotiated Oslo and all the other uh, agreements, uh, 48 and Jerusalem were excluded from those agreements. Do you think now this position is still tenable? That uh, that that um, a Palestinian leadership has to now also stand for the Palestinians of 48 and Jerusalem as well, as the West Bank and Gaza? Yeah, to, to my knowledge, uh, Oslo agreements, or to be specific, the Declaration of Principles of 1993 did not exclude Jerusalem. Actually, uh, specifically, it states Jerusalem as one of the things that needs to be negotiated between the two sides. Granted, that, yeah, yeah, no, I get yeah, it. Yeah. That, in itself, that in itself was uh, an important uh, backtracking by the, Israeli, by the Israeli side. Anyway, uh, to, to make things uh, simple, I mean, there is no need to have any theoretical uh, discussion about Oslo. Suffice to, to mention that the Israeli government successive Israeli governments in practice canceled the agreements and uh, uh, made all kinds of steps, all kinds of measures, put all kinds of measures in place that contradicts the, the agreement and violate the agreements. And I would say even represent the antithesis of them. I, I give you one example. For instance, the Israeli government brought back the military government to the occupied territory under the name, the coordinator of the government activities in, in, in the territories. That's precisely the military government. And they returned the uh, civil administration of the government. The agreements clearly specify the need for withdrawing the military government and uh, abrogating the civil administration because their existence is the antithesis of any idea for self-government. So in a way, uh, in many ways, actually, the Israeli government uh, abrogated those, those agreements and, uh, and, and buried them, not only killed them, but, but buried them. There is no Palestinian, uh, clear Palestinian position in this regard. And I personally think that the right position is to, uh, uh, to state that, what I have just said, and, and to add to it, that from a Palestinian point of view, uh, we will maintain certain parts of the agreement, especially those in the interest of the Palestinian people, such as the existence of the authority, and maybe uh, things related to our money, that's the Palestinian money, uh, because we need uh, because we need that. Uh, and in addition, I think we need to have an overall strategy how uh, to end the agreements in the same way, but in a way, in the same way the Israeli did, but from our point of view, in a way that uh, ensure the Palestinian interest and how to uh, maintain and, and develop those, those rights. Um, you have been a critic of Hamas uh, uh, in the past, and yet we see now uh, Hamas flags flying along with Fatah flags in, in Nablus. We saw lots of Hamas flags also in Al-Aqsa, um, and there are big demonstrations. Uh, do you acknowledge that Hamas is now gaining popularity uh, in, in, uh, in the West Bank? Yes, I do acknowledge that, and uh, that's, that's obvious, and it's, it's, it's only 
natural natural thing given the state of state of affairs. But by the way, um, uh, did I or was I uh, strong critic critic of, of Hamas? Yes and no. Yes, because we have differences and, and we have a problem of Gaza and we need to achieve reunification, geographic and political. But no, uh, in a way that I have never considered them considered them the enemy. And I, I was uh, strongly pushing for uh, achieving reunification and ending the split. Uh, unfortunately, I did not think that the last deal between Hamas and Fatah or part of Hamas and part of Fatah on the elections and uh, related matters as a deal that would get us closer uh, to ending the split. Actually, uh, I saw it as uh, a deal that is uh, that would entrench the, the split and would not realize the Palestinian interest. And uh, I, I believe that experience showed that what that was the right uh, the right evaluation. So in short, uh, Hamas uh, represent the uh, the the political Islam, if you wish, or political Islamist, and and uh, as such, we do have differences and we do have problems, but uh, they are part of the Palestinian people. And I do hope that things will develop uh, on the Palestinian scene generally in a way uh, that, that, that we would have at the end uh, three major trends. One is the national democratic trend in the middle, and one that is national Islamist or Islamic trend, and one that is national left trend. If we succeed in doing that, we will have achieved something very important for the interests of the Palestinian people and the, the future of, of our, uh, our, our kids. And so the, you're in favor of, uh, of forming a national government with, with, with Hamas and, and also in, including Hamas in the PLO? Yes, but not only that. I think we need a package uh, on which we, 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 we should achieve national uh, national consensus. Uh, we should start with ending uh, the split and achieving the reunification, i.e. changing the situation in Gaza, because in my mind, there are three requirements for achieving the reunification. One is the return of Gaza Strip to the political and administrative uh, Palestinian system. And two, uh, uh, serious, uh, serious uh, sharing or common uh, common uh, system, political system, that should be open to everybody with the participation of everybody, including in, in the PLO. And three, we need to do that based on political program and not just a uh, few words here and there that should be clear, the common denominator on, on the basis of which we, we rebuild the, the PLO and we uh, achieve serious and significant unification or unity of, of our people. And if we do that, then of course the road uh, for the PLO uh, will be open for the entry of all forces, including Hamas, and uh, the road for uh, new government with the participation of Hamas and all other forces also should should be open. So yes, uh, PLO and uh, government are two uh, very important elements, but. Uh, not only these, you have to add to that achieving the reunification, and you have to add to that uh, things related to the legal framework uh, and changing things such as the election law, for instance. And we need also to agree on uh, a body that should be entrust entrusted with, with uh, implementing whatever is agreed upon by national uh, dialogue. Uh, and uh, uh, should should take responsibilities for a while until the uh, normal or natural bodies such as the Central Council and the Executive Committee of the PLO and the government uh, takes takes charge. Can, uh, can we talk a little bit about um, the um, the Arab states? Um, what would you say to the Arab states who 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 normalized relations with Israel? Um, and it was done specifically over, over the heads of, of, uh, of the Palestinians um, and, and specifically 
um, avoiding uh, mention of uh, a, a Palestinian state. At least that was done from uh, former President Trump's uh, end and Kushner's end. Yeah. Um, what would you say to those Arab states that, 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 that signed those deals now? Yes, let, let me first say that uh, I, I am strong believers in the uh, Arab solidarity with the question of Palestine and that uh, Arabs generally uh, present the leverage of the Palestinian struggle without Arab dimension, frankly, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult to say the least for the Palestinians alone. So this is the starting point. We uh, are for Arab solidarity and are for uh, Arab consensus and we need always to build the kind of Arab consensus around the Palestinian cause in a way that would help the, the cause and help the Palestinian people. Now, on uh, the issue of uh, policies or actions taken by some Arab states, let me clarify this. One, uh, what they did is not even the opposite or the reversal of the Arab Peace Initiative. It's worse than that. Because the Arab Peace Initiative was saying uh, that Israel, uh, we will, if Israel withdraw, we will normalize relations with it. So the reversal would be, we will normalize relations and we expect Israel to withdraw. What they did recently is that we are normalizing relationship without withdrawal. <laughs> so so it's, it's much worse than the reversal of the Arab Peace Initiative. That's number one. Number two, uh, actually, I, I don't see what's in it for them even. Uh, from the national interest point of view of those states, at some point, the Israelis and the Americans uh, sang the song of uh, Iran is the central threat uh, against the Gulf states, and it's not Israel. On the contrary, these states need to forge a, a, an alliance with, with Israel. That proved to be nonsense, uh, including uh, after the, uh, boom, the, the, the bombardment or the targeting of Aramco in Saudi Arabia. Neither the United States nor Israel rushed to the rescue of Aramco or, or anyone else. And anyone who reads well and, and watches well, well can clearly call that this is not the cards. Uh, on the other hand, even if we contemplate some kind of economic trade uh, uh, balanced interest, mutual interest, this also, and again, is, is false, it's nonsense. And uh, once more, if anyone reads carefully and watches carefully, he or she would know easily that this is not the Israeli way. So I, I don't see the, the, the interest, even from a narrow nationalistic point of view of, of, those, of those states. I think they made a mistake. I think uh, it's not sustainable. But I think, on the other hand, that we need to have uh, uh, dialogue. We need to have uh, frank dialogue with, with, uh, with all of our Arab brothers. Uh, we need to regain their respect. And that's one of the problems there. We need to regain their respect. We need to speak with them the truth. And we need to try, again, to forge common position in the interest of the Palestinian people. That is not impossible. That's quite of the thing that's still, that's still possible, but it takes efforts and it takes some, some times, and we have to be ready to do precisely that. Well, what, what, what do you think of, of Mohammed Dahlan and, and his, because he, he was also, there, there was a list that was, that was also going to represent his faction um, in the elections that are being cancelled and his relationship with, with the United Emirates. Would you say he's part of the problem or is he, or is he a brother as well? Uh, well, the, the, this story, of course, did have several episodes, but let me deal with the last, the last part of it, that's the elections. I, I did say publicly uh, that uh, this phenomenon is not one that would be accepted by the Palestinian people easily, and especially because of the Emirati uh, policy and what the, Emirati, the, what the United Arab Emirates did uh, with regard to the Palestinian cause uh, generally. 
Uh, but I did say that many of the cadres, uh, men and, and women working with, with this group are our brothers and sisters and the uh, door should be open for reconciliation. And this is uh, one thing that I try to press very hard, the internal reconciliation within Fatah, whether with us, with me and with the group uh, that works with me or with, with this group, irrespective of whatever position is there vis-a-vis -vis Mr. X or Mr. Y, but as a phenomenon, we need to uh, cooperate and we need to absorb that phenomenon. And could, could we talk briefly about the position of, of Mahwan Abaguti, who is, who, is, who, is, who is on your list? I think he's now um, in solitary confinement um, after a statement he made. I think the Israelis were very um, concerned about uh, a new front opening up in the, in, in, in the prisons. What, 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 what is, um, the, have you had any word of him? Unfortunately, there is no direct communication as one would expect, as we said, he is in solitary confinement uh, and it's not easy to, to communicate. But since we started our uh, National Democratic uh, Assembly, I personally said and many other uh, colleagues said that uh, the natural place for Marwan is to be with, with, this, with this movement, with, with this assembly. And we pushed hard uh, for, for all of us to be in the same, in the same, uh, the same place, uh, asking for renewal and for change and, and, and uh, pushing for uh, uh, certain results during the elections. So uh, Marwan at the end uh, is, not, is not with us. It's not, uh, he was not on the list of al Hurriya, but his wife and uh, other friends of his are on the list or were on the list before the whole elections uh, get, get uh, canceled or abrogated. And uh, of course, uh, that, that shows his full support of, of al Hurriya list or the freedom list. Uh, something that I think reflected very positively on, on the list generally. We did some serious efforts to achieve the unity or the, uh, the one list that, that materialized. And it was uh, an experience that I personally am proud of. Uh, now we are going back to reactivate the National Democratic Assembly and to move forward. But if we go back as we should to the, uh, to the elections, we, we might have the same, the same experience yet again. If, if there were genuinely free elections, uh, in Palestine, and you actually had the will of the people, all the people, all the Palestinians who could, who, who, who could vote. Would Mahwan uh, be the new president of Palestine? Well, I have no doubt in mind that had we uh, had the uh, elections normally uh, proceeding as, as it was planned in, in May, uh, results would uh, would have been completely different, including during the legislative elections, as well as the uh, presidential elections. I have no doubt in mind that uh, with regard to the legislative elections and Korea or the freedom uh, list uh, would have uh, would have scored uh, high and achieved probably surprising results. And I also have no doubt in my mind uh, that had Marwan Barwuti run for the presidency, he would have won. And we stated clearly, repeatedly, that uh, for us, uh, we do support him. We do support his candidatures. And if needed, we would be ready to present the candidatures. One, one final question. What is your message to, to Benjamin Netanyahu? Go home. Simple. I think uh, it's it's, uh, it's high time for Benjamin Netanyahu to leave the theater and leave it uh, for for other uh, for other leaders. We need uh, new ideas, fresh blood, uh, new everything, uh, and 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 change is just the way of life. I mean, you, you can't just freeze the situation as this for uh, as as long as it was as it was frozen. Many thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Kuda, for your time, and, and I okay. hope to be in the flesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.